Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We welcome you inside Brampton's Memorial Arena for tonight's Ontario Junior Lacrosse League game of the week between the Orangeville Northmen, who you see there on your screen, occupying the visitor's bench, wearing their black uniforms with white lettering. They'll go right to left away from Chris Riglieri tonight. And the home side to Brampton Excelsiors in their home whites, maroon and gold trim for the Excelsiors, two of the more iconic junior lacrosse teams here in Ontario and in Canada. Kyle Kennery and Mark Sands will be the two officials here tonight. And it's very simple for Orangeville. Win and they're in. They clinch a playoff spot here this evening. A loss for the Excelsiors would mathematically eliminate them from playoff contention. Still a path for them to get there. However, it is a very slim one needing to win out and beat have a lot of things happen in front of them with other teams losing and beat Burlington by, I think it's six goals in their matchup coming up down the stretch. Opening faceoff is controlled here by Orangeville. As we're underway, Matthew Carrick and our JVI Sports Network crew presenting this game of the week, powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Trey Deer unable to connect on the near side with Noah Millsap. They'll set up again to their leading scorer, Liam Matthews, as the shot comes from Colton Marquis. Great tournament last year for Colton Marquis in the Toronto Rock Athletic Center bubble. As we got a delayed penalty coming here to Brampton already. A Wrigley on the bench. Liam Matthews representing the extra attacker. From the corner, Deer goes cross crease. And that just in and out of the stick there of Cole Teeple. Deer all the way up top to Bucktooth who picks the corner. The top pick in this year's Ontario Junior Lacrosse League entry draft for a reason. Just a high, hard rip there from Bucktooth, who is having a tremendous season. Getting the early goal here for Orangeville. From Trey Deer and Liam Matthews, two names that we're gonna call a lot of here this evening. Andrew Horsley came up with a faceoff for Brampton as Another penalty coming here to the Excelsiors. A hard outside shot from Liam McGrath. And we'll get the penalty, I believe. Well, I th thought it was going to be too many men, but they call the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty coming from the bench. New head coach this year, Pat O'Toole. It's his son Connor getting the start in net this evening. Had a chance to talk to him earlier this season. Pat, that is, recognizing that this was probably going to be a struggle of a season as Deer shoots low on O'Toole, who makes the save. 18 players graduating from the team that played in the Iroquois Trophy Finals last year, won by St. Catharines, and only two had played any junior lacrosse coming into this season for the Excelsiors. So a lot of learning. They lost Lucas Ferreira and Jacob Garcia at the trade deadline as the Northmen get set up here on the power play with Bucktooth up top. Low changeup shot from Matthews. Bucktooth returns the favor and we're up 2-0. Early start in this game as it comes back to Matthews and a low shot just sneaks its way through. Big scrum looking for this face off. Nate Ruff will pull it out. Chin strap is loose. 
Andrew Horsley there to knock the stick. That is Milton Menace on Mississauga Chargers crime there as those two played junior hockey in the winter. Running down floor, Owen Rand. And Ron will take it in transition and score and make it 3 0. So, not even three minutes in yet, and picked up by Owen Ron and the Alec Manoa esque throw the stick at it and hope it works. It does not, and it's 3 0. Another battle for this face-off as Adrian Chanel comes away with it. Chanel will get pushed out towards the timekeeper's bench. Wall pops loose. Thought it was going to end up in that visitor's penalty box, but kept alive by Liam Perro. Elijah Edwards. It's Cohen Jennings who had gone to the bench, now circles back and now does go off. Noah Millsap. Far side for Matthews, Bucktooth returning for Matthews, who was in the crease before the shot. Liam Steele got it across center. Into the stick of Cody Merritt, just avoided the over and back. First extended possession here for the Excelsiors. It's played all the way up top, big high step there from Donnelly. Back for Eric Ward. Ward will get a screen. Ran straight through a high stick that went undetected. And his shot goes off a Wrigley and into the corner where Bowie Horseman will get a fresh 30. Here's Ethan Harkins. To fake the shot, brought it down, and a Wrigley the save. Big scrum looking for this rebound in the corner where it's finally picked up by Elijah Edwards. Colton Marquis across center. Pressure coming, Marquis went down and then smothered as that ball popped out. Phoenix pulling there to grab the loose ball and Marquis got up slowly. Big swim move from Pullen. Trey Deer and Bucktooth over on Pullen on the far side. Horseman the long shot, bounces off of Riglieri. Trey Deer is down floor trying to get it there as Aiden Long and Deer called in the crease. Just get a look. Oof, that is a very close call, but I think it's a good one made by Mark Sands. As we've got five minutes gone here in the first period. Three nothing to score. Already for Orangeville. Chanel fakes, drives in the shot just wide. They're gonna say it did hit off of Wrigley areas. Rebound is picked up, delayed penalty coming here to Orangeville. Horseman will pull out. As will Ward as they'll wait for O'Toole to get on the bench. Extra attacker is Bowie Horseman. Horseman across here for Chanel. They go for the quick stick to Liam Keen. And finally the stick of Origlieri there to pick up the ball. Origlieri, an interesting case. As Liam Perro goes off for cross checking. Rigliere, a slow start to his season, but has come on strong, winning the last four of his starts. I believe it may actually be five, which is the run that Orangeville's gone on recently. Donnelly over for acting here on the Brampton power play. They get it back for Ward. We'll find Acton again, a bouncer there, kicked aside by Riglieri. Horseman there to extend the possession, however. And now Bowie Horseman to the far side, found Acton right in his backswing and Acton there to let fly. Ward now thought he saw the corner and it sails off the end boards and up into the screening. Nearly the first half of the power play all spent 
in Brampton's attacking territory. Noah Millsap. Big screen there in front, and Trent Robertson's going to even up the numbers in the penalty box as he took his man down. Trey Deer leading Matthews back for Deer. High shot. Goes off the back glass and back over center. And we do get the cross checking call against Robertson. So to finish the thought on a Wrigley I remember back to the first season that Doug Jamison played in the NLL, was so dominant before getting drafted. And you remember back to the bubble season last year for Wrigley just exploded onto the scene after a few stellar junior B seasons. Seems to have settled back in here to summer ball down the stretch. Shot in on O'Toole. Quickly picked up by Mark Van Scheppen. Van Scheppen running down the far boards. Tripped up and still manages to retain possession. Van Scheppen will bounce it. Back to the far side, running into it. Cody Merritt. Dying seconds of this four on four. It will now turn into a power play for Orangeville. Dying seconds of the Brampton shot clock. Liam Keane realizes it, takes it to the net. And the shot clock expired just before that shot went over top of Origlieri. Cole Teeple will slow things down, fakes it to Matthews. Marquis for Matthews, now back up top, Bucktooth. He goes around the back, Bucktooth. Can't shoot it down the alley as a pair of players got their sticks in the way. One of those was Liam Steele, who now brings it up over center just before the eight count. Adrian Chanel into the corner. 30 seconds left here in the Orangeville power play. Closing in on the final 10 of this shot clock for Brampton as Horseman was stumbled. Still managed to shovel a backhand in on Origlieri. Looked like it may have surprised him, but in position to make the save anyways. 3-0 the scores. We're about to go back 5-on-5 five five after having played nine minutes of this first period. Matthews up top. Jumping the route was Riley DeLille. And O'Toole will make the save. Van Sheppen looked like he brought it down. This is on the Brampton eight count. And got a hurry to get it over center. I don't think this is going to work out. It's not. As Robertson, fresh out of the box, didn't have enough time to clear center. Deer, now Bucktooth, and Cohen Jennings representing the lefties. Hard pass intended there for Deer. Went off the... Back of the helmet, it looked like, of Liam Steele. Now a hard shot and shove after the fact from Robertson. He'll go to the box for the second time here in this period. Called for a high stick on the dead ball. Made the comment the other night that Kyle Kennery is one of those officials who has NLL experience. And that is a zero tolerance call in the NLL. So it will put Orangeville back on the power play. Already their third of the period. Including, not including rather, one that got wiped out. Orangeville pick up, turn and shot there from Noah Millsap. Got hit hard twice. Trying to get that one away, and it looks like Millsap is okay, though, shaking out the right hand on his way to the bench. What a story Dante Bowen's been as he gets through a number of defenders, three of them in total, but couldn't beat a Wrigley The last one there for the Northmen. 
Dante Bowen worth the price of admission here for this Brampton squad. He's played Team Ontario as well, was in Team Canada training camp or selection camp, I guess. To the far side, Trey Deer, low shot, bounces off the leg of O'Toole into the corner where Jeremy Searle picks up to extend the possession. Bucktooth across. Bucktooth back, ate a big chop. They go down to the crease and Deer was in the crease as that shot arrived. Ontario Junior Lacrosse League playoffs will end before the U22 Worlds to allow those players in this league to go and compete for their respective countries. Which means the playoffs are we're only about a week and a half away. Get underway on July the 12th. Pass there from Cody Coulson into the corner. Penalty has expired. They try the quick stick again. As this ball sits dormant right in front of O'Toole. Millsap got knocked over looking for it. and Now gets up and a few shoves there for Mark Van Scheppen. And Millsap turned around and went after Andrew Horsley as well. And I think the concern from the Brampton bench was how quickly Robertson went off earlier versus how many shots Millsap was allowed to take right there. This looks like it's going to be a five-on-five five for the offsetting roughing call with 8.23 to play here in the first period. Millsap outside to Bucktooth. A lot of movement here on this power play set as the shot goes into O'Toole. Excuse me, five-on-five five set. And O'Toole there to hang on to the rebound as well. Steele. Finds his man crossing over center. Donnelly. We go back to Horseman. Cody Merritt trailing the play. Goes and sets a screen now for Donnelly. Donnelly trying to pass back for Merritt, and that one goes back over, and everyone scampers to their benches to make changes. Only two more broadcasts coming up in the regular season. Cole Tiepel brings it down. It comes back for Colton Marquis, who scores. Much to the light of the visitors' bench off to our right, as you may have heard. Ball carrier draws two defenders and all kinds of room here for Marquis to send a perfect shot past the high defender. Real pretty from Colton Marquis as Cole Tiepel picks up the assist. So four nothing here. Closing in on seven minutes to play in the first period. Not a whole lot for a Riglieri to do yet. As he's staring down a Brampton possession now, Adrian Chanel around a pick. There's a shot that a Riglieri saves. Rebound goes straight back from where it came from and into the stick of Donnie Scott who gets run over. Liam McGrath far side. Trey Deer. Deer coming across the restraining line. We'll play back for Coulson. Bucktooth in the corner for Marquis. Flipped it back where he thought Coulson was going to be. And he was not there as Bowen and Jeremy Searle were hard on each other and are still hard on each other. As they give the ball to Brampton.
Cody Barrett for Chanel. Finds room to run, takes the shot from a bad angle and never did hit a Wrigley before bouncing up and out of play. Donnelly pleading his case. But Kyle Kennery's got it going the way of the Northman. Here's Matthews. Trey Deere and Bucktooth trailing the play as shot from Matthews, saved by O'Toole. Deere is there, finds Coulson cutting through. And Cody Coulson will be the fifth different scorer here in the period. This starts with an outside shot from Matthews and watch the rebound. Deere follows it and a wide open lane to run through for Coulson, who you'll see just arrive in your screen to put that one home. That'll be Deere's third point of the game and Matthews has four. Giving him an even 60 now on the season. If my math is correct, which it not very often is. Outside shot coming there from the Northman, the cutter, Liam McGrath, couldn't beat O'Toole. We approach five minutes to go, Harkins from the outside. Being kept out there by Owen Ron. Now over the top, Horseman on the run. Took that shot right off the helmet of Ron. Bounced straight to Aiden Long, who quickly brought it up over center. Orangeville was looking for the substitution penalty as Robertson is tied up again, this time with Cool Teeple on the left side of the crease. It's where the ball ends up, where it's drug out of harm's way by O'Toole. Van Sheppen off the bench. Donnelly couldn't handle his pass. Bats it down into the offensive territory and straighten the stick of Liam Perro, however. Our next broadcast will be July the 8th, which is next week, and it will be in Orangeville as they unveil their 2019 Minto Cup banner as Liam Matthews will get another on the run, stuffs it into the corner. Little give and go there from the outside and Matthews there to find it and Pot his fourth point here of the period. On six goals for the Northmen. Interference called off the face off. Excelsiors will get possession here. And Liam Keane will get it up and over center. Jeremy Searle gets the assist on the Matthews goal, becoming the eighth different Northman to register a point here in the opening 16 minutes of the first period as jogging off is Cohen Jennings to give Brampton their second power play of the game. As I said, July 8th is our next broadcast in Orangeville. Mimico Mountaineers in the house. That could be a very important game for both teams in terms of playoff seating. And then we'll be here on the ninth, our final regular season broadcast as the Six Nations Arrows will face the Brampton Excelsiors with a chance perhaps to sneak their way into the postseason. 
Coming on strong at the end of this campaign are the Arrows after a slow start. Back-to-back -back saves from Origlieri in the opening 30 seconds of this power play. Has Horseman back in his own end, recovering the loose ball. Flip pass for Eric Acton off of Origlieri. Bounced straight for McGrath, however. And McGrath is going to wait for help. Bucktooth. Looks like the chin strap is loose on Bucktooth here as well. Officials haven't caught it yet. But Jamison Bucktooth down in the corner. Taking a couple whacks at it and finally brought down to his knees as the ball pops free. Ty Cardi there to pick up. Cardi had, Don had Donnelly, but Donnelly facing a double team. Ate a slash as well, so he's in conversation with Kyle Kennery. 30 seconds to go in the Brampton power play. As they look to get their first on the board here, nearing the two-minute warning. Horseman from the corner, Acton. Lost control, and it's right into the stick. Here of Owen Ron, already with one in the game. It's Searle taking over. Searle and Coulson. Trey Deer back up top for Teeple. Teeple returns for Deer. Penalty has expired. And now we get stoppage here as Cole, Teeple, and Phoenix Pullen have words. And a high sticking call comes to Cole Teeple. This battle went for quite some time right at the restraining line. Phoenix Pullen for Brampton, Cole Teeple for. Orangeville and officials decide it's a high sticking call against the Northmen. Excelsior's 0 for 2 on their first couple power play opportunities. 90 seconds to go in the period here would be a good chance to break that mark. Minute 45 power play time left and a minute 20 to go here in the period. Trey Deer out to the outside. Another penalty coming here. It'll be to Brampton this time. I think Andrew Horsley got a chop in on possibly Jeremy Searle. Up top for Bucktooth. He's the extra attacker. On the run in for O'Toole and the bucket comes off. Brampton player and Searle got in the face. I believe that was, excuse me. Was it Chanel or Robertson? Robertson going off, Horsley doing the same. As here's the end of the play. Starts on the far side as the tackle there, oh. Yeah, arriving late on scene was Noah Millsap, which is how the helmet came dislodged. So we're just outside of the final minute here. A reminder to subscribe to this YouTube channel here, the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League. We'll be four on four for a minute and 22 seconds. The remainder of this first period. False start there from Bucktooth. Dropped it at the back of the stick. Has it back to Colton Marquis now, though. Has now Coulson. Back for Bucktooth. He gets a big screen there from Trey Deer. Borderline could have given him the moving call, but Deer dealing with a pair of defenders on the far side. Trey Deer back for Marquis. Colton Marquis taken down at the hands of Riley DeLille and the extra slash when he got down to the turf. Will put the third man in the box here for the Excelsiors. And this is the first time I think we've seen this this year. This is a new rule 
The Excelsiors get one more. I believe we're in penalty shot territory. Jamison Bucktooth will slow things down, looking for last shot here. Representing the high man in what would be the normal set. Time ticking away here in the first period. Here comes the play. Bucktooth into the corner. Quick stick shot returned. It's racking the stick of Van Sheppen, though. And Mark Van Sheppen from long range. <laughs> oh. Orangeville coaching staff aren't going to want a Riglieri trying that too many times as he went for the clean catch from long range. But how about a 6 nothing period for the Orangeville Northmen on a night when they can clinch a playoff spot? Good start for them here in Brampton. Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Games of the Week is brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, including recipes, visit new.milk.org as we will take a quick time out. We're about nine minutes here before the second period. We'll be back to Brampton on the other side of this break.
Well, there's a look at the penalty boxes. If you missed our first period, uh, you missed quite some action, at least on the side of Orangeville as they lead 6 0. Trent Robertson and Noah Millsap, the offsetting penalties for high sticking. Andrew Horsley for slashing. Cole Teeple remains in there for Orangeville, as does Riley DeLille for Brampton. So still in penalty shot territory. And I believe this is four on three in favor of Orangeville. Who were one for three in power play opportunities in the first period. They're gonna go up five on three now for 34 seconds. Crucial game for both of these teams, as we said, as Bucktooth's shot is stuffed there by Mark Van Scheppen. Van Scheppen chasing it into the corner where it bounces off the wall and in for Connor O'Toole. Ty Cardi will spin back. Brampton working right to left here in period number two. As Cardi got caught, looked like in the face mask what he was saying, and Brampton wanted a penalty that they're not going to get. First penalty has expired, so traditional power play now for Orangeville. As they set up with Bucktooth up top, he shoots right down the pipe and off the shoulder of O'Toole. And now a battle for it as Cole Teeple worked in with Van Scheppen on the boards. Colton Marquis got it back. Bucktooth will wait for the penalty to expire. And we're back to five on five for the first time in quite some time after things got a little spicy at the end of that first period. Here's Bucktooth. Out in front, that tipped off the stick of an Orangeville player who went down and took a slash. And again, Bowen and Trey Deer having words and now sticks come up in a big way in behind as off to the side there's also a bit of a scrum that the officials are trying to break up with Owen Ron well we had a good run of about 16 seconds of five on five and that might change up here. As Orangeville has been working Dante Bowen pretty hard in this game. Looks like two players per side have gone off here. Keep your eye on the right side of your screen. This is where this develops with Matthews and Bowen getting involved. Bowen goes right back after Matthews, takes him down, and then... Coming in to say something was Trey Deer, Mark Van Scheppen, and then all hands on deck. So again, if you missed it in our first period, our next two broadcasts will be July the 8th. Back-to-back -back next weekend will be in Orangeville as they unveil their 2019 Minto Cup banner and honor some of their graduating players. Including, I believe, my regular partner, Jonathan Donville, not here this evening. Minto Cup MVP, and I did check the first one ever to do, to have it three years running. A couple players went back to back. The only one three years in running, and there's Liam Keane. Clean pick on the rebound, and he'll put it behind Origlieri to break the ice for Brampton. First shot will come from the far side. A nice little cutback move to find the cutter. Here, Ward, and then Keane. <laughs> Origlieri almost got that still. Going full splits. But it is 6-1. Here is Brampton's on the board. Sticks go high in front of the Brampton net. And Origlieri coming to the bench underneath our broadcast position as Orangeville will go back to the power play. 
It'll be an illegal cross check. It looks like to Phoenix Pullen for the fifth power play of the game. Excuse me, it's Neil Adamson who said something on his way by and that'll be the evening for Neil Adamson. Logan Donnelly heading over to serve that penalty. That game in Orangeville will face the Mimico Mountaineers. Again, a huge game potentially for both of those teams in terms of playoff seeding. And then the next night we'll be back here as the Excelsiors welcome the Six Nations Arrows in what could be a big matchup for them. Long range shot there from Bucktooth. Blasts off the end boards. Looks like Dante Bowen's going to chase this one down and negate the over and back. Bowen will give possession as a hard pick comes in from Cody Merritt. Hey, hey, hey. Bowen taking a couple picks there. Now the double team arrives. Liam Stadnick in as well as Liam McGrath and Bowen gets past both of them. Dante Bowen will spin back now. Shoots as getting hit. And it rings off the end boards. Right to Merritt, however. His shot in on a Wrigley. He got filled in after letting one fly. Bodies are banging down on the floor tonight. Under a minute to play in the power play. Three and a half gone here in the second as Trey Deer will take top spot. Into the corner, Coulson working back. Bucktooth sneaks it past O'Toole. Jamison Bucktooth, second goal of the game. First one came on a delayed penalty call. Has a lot of movement from the lefties. Over to the right side and the goal to make it 7-1. Pull in a little too much off that draw. Was the call from the official. That'll hand it here to Orangeville. Working the far side, Marquis for Trey Deer. He shoots around a high screen. That was pulling, and O'Toole saw it the entire way, trying to find Horsley on a breakout. And Andrew Horsley will bring it down. For Cohen Jennings now. Out in the corner, shot coming here from Eric Ward. Penalty coming to Orangeville as it's brought down by Horseman. No time for Bowie Horseman to get a shot away and we'll get the cross-checking call here against Liam McGrath. Thought that Coulson got an assist on that last goal, but it sounds like they gave one to Jamison Bucktooth. And if they did, that'll be three points. for Bucktooth here in this game. Fourth power play of the game coming here to Brampton. 0 for, 0 for 3 so far. As that pass falls errant and Liam Perro will pick it up. Pushing down the far side. Brought down here. By Donnie Scott. And now on the run is Coulson. Cody Coulson all the way over top of everybody into the stick of Trey Deer. Five minutes gone in the first. Second, excuse me. As Coulson crashes into 
Owen uh, Shuva Yellow and Dante Bowen. <laughs> Bowen will sidestep the return hit and pass the ball to the far side so he can head off. Donnelly for Horseman, who has it up top, fakes the pass. Now it goes over to the left side where Ward will take the shot. Origlieri the save, but Brampton with the rebound. Horseman straight down the pipe. That looked like it would have beat Origlieri had it been on target. <laughs> and O'Toole's going to stand his ground and let that one take about six or seven hops into the big goalie stick. 40 seconds to go in the power play for Brampton. Orangeville can take this nearly all the way down. As Marquis will match up one-on-one -on -one with Horsley. Now getting a pick from Millsap. Marquis for Bucktooth. Marquis, long range shot, skips it off the turf and off the end glass. Robertson there to bring it over center. Robertson had three penalties in that first period. So two away from an ejection himself, as we've already seen Adamson head to the room. Here's Keane, lone goal scorer so far for Brampton. Nearly had another one as that one just skipped wide. Eric Ward for Keane on the run. Lex not to shoot, one-handed pushes it towards the cage and a tricky save there from Mariglieri who looks up and down floor into the stick of Liam McGrath who turns and fires wide. Now Dante Bowen will pick up and he's one who can go for a run if he so chooses. Lex to pass in the corner this time, however. Staying on the floor to play offense though. Watching Eric Acton send it to the far side. Ward around a screen. Now to the net, the shot. Off of Riglieri and into the corner. Picked up here, big collision. Over in that corner as Bo Acton, excuse me, gave to Bowen and it just rattled off his stick. Now Aiden Long down floor, long cutback move. And looked like the signal from Kyle Kennery was goal and then said crease. But either way, Brampton back the other way and Acton will shoot it into the feet of Origlieri who gets up and looks down floor. They want to play again. Deer will quick it to Cohen Jennings. Jennings got filled in after the bounce pass up top and now Searle going after Trent Robertson here. Remember, Robertson sitting on three minors. Liam Matthews. Sounded like the shot clock went. Mark Sands is counting it down on the floor as a skip shot and hits O'Toole and goes up and out of play. Logan Donnelly is going to get called for a penalty here as took a shot to his man, Origlieri again flying to the bench behind us. Bucktooth for Deer. Back up for Bucktooth. Oh, around the back, nifty little pass there, forcing O'Toole into a save from the shot. And Bucktooth will extend possession. Oh, faked the big chop there to pull in. Who had cleared out of the way. Deer, number of fakes. It rolls out of his stick. And off the dasher, Brampton can't bring it down clean. Donnelly on a cross check. And Coulson picked up an extra minor afterwards. Those will offset and will remain five on five. It looked like the penalty to Coulson was a cross check as well. So Brampton may have got away with one there. As we'll have even numbers and not their sixth man down opportunity. As we're not even at the halfway mark yet. 
Eight second count there against Orangeville and numbers for Brampton as they turn back the other way. Chanel all the way to the net. No Rigliari will send that one wide. Big hit coming here. Chanel collides in with Elijah Edwards. Edwards did get it up and across center before the eight count, but now Ty Cardi and Dante Bowen will stand in hard and glo gloves coming up there as Bowen shrugs off his man and sends Liam McGrath down and that's gonna draw a crowd over on the far side. Looks like the officials are gonna let Cardi and Edwards go if they want to and well, maybe they don't. Bowen is headed off to the box. Liam McGrath for Orangeville. Ty Cardi as well. And Elijah Edwards. So we'll see what happens here now. Again, a week and a half away from the playoffs as the pitcher is not much clearer. Mimico, a one game lead over Whitby and Toronto and Oakville, all tied with 12 wins apiece. Big matchup coming up. I believe it's Tuesday night when Mimico travels to Whitby. Mimico in action tonight, hosting Burlington. We have yet to receive a score update from that game. Big win for Mimico over St. Catharines on Thursday night. As now Merritt will go to the box. That's the only penalty on the board right now. So despite the crowd you see across from our broadcast position. Just one on the board, so. This will be the sixth power play of the game for Orangeville. And the penalty shot rule only counts in terms of men down on the floor. So no stack penalties once you get to three. The next one is where we would get in penalty shot territory. Still a bit of ways away from that for Brampton. Another shot from Bucktooth. How about three goals all on the power play for Bucktooth? Excuse me, one of those coming on a delayed penalty, so effectively six on five. So all of them with an extra man as Bucktooth. This is just going to be a rip. I don't think it hit anything either. Just between the small space that was between the arm of O'Toole and the post. Van Sheppen looked like he had brought that face off down and then bump forced it free. Orangeville did not get up and across center. Now they do. Oh, and Ron ate a huge slash. That had Orangeville calling for a penalty. Big tie up in front, man. That Jeremy Searle and Trent Robertson matchup is been one to watch here tonight as they're back in each other's face again. The shot comes in and hung on to by O'Toole. Trey Deer took a parting shot at Mark Van Sheppen as penalty will come down the far side. Everybody in the building called that one. As now Horsley stumbles to a knee. 
Delayed penalty coming up here to Orangeville, who lead 8-1 with nine minutes to play. Ward, him and Horsman were playing catch. Riglieri thought he had it. Rebound up for grabs, and as Orangeville control, it will be, well, some more conversation. I was going to say it will be the power play, but high stick is the call as a couple of those offsetting penalties expire, and Noah Millsap will go and take Cody, Cody Coulson's spot. Excuse me. If you missed any of the action from our Ontario Junior Lacrosse League coverage, there's a playlist located here on this channel where you can get caught up or relive any of your favorite games as we take you into the playoffs and all the way to the Minto Cup, which will be at the CAA Center here in Brampton at the end of August. Horseman that bounced off of a Orangeville defender, so that was not going to be over and back, I believe. Moot point anyways, as they saved it from crossing the line. Too much from Liam Perro in the corner. Gives Brampton another chance in acting. Just couldn't stuff it in that near side. Horseman from up top, a fake pass. Now going to Harkins. Horseman around is back to Acton. For Harkins, can't bring it down. And it bounces right in the stick of Owen Ron. Already with one, now gives to Nate Ruff. <coughs> Ruff lost the ball in the process. Robertson took a shot here at Liam Matthews. And Robertson's getting a ton of attention now. And... Owen Ron has seen enough of Robertson in this game. Robertson stumbles and covers up, and that draws a reaction from Brampton, but... Still down off to our right side is Liam Matthews. Leah Matthews and DJ Drysdale in conversation right now. And you, you saw it as Matthews came off the floor. He was, yeah, not 100%. Robertson has been asked to leave. He'll join Neil Adamson in what we told was an air-conditioned dressing room. Sounds like a good place to be, to be quite honest. Another hot night here. When is it ever not hot in Memorial Arena, except for perhaps hockey season, which I understand is not going to be the case here anymore. Permanent turf. Matthews, we, we get a good look at the bench off to our right-hand side is in a lot of discomfort. Rusty Kruger and Andrew Suter not happy with the fact that that was not seen. Again, just a two officiating crew here tonight. A lot of games going on, including... Some Junior B action, two here in Junior A. And our cameras unfortunately missed it as well. 7.52 to play here in the second. In what is an 8-1 Orangeville Northman lead. A five-minute major up on the board on the side of Robertson. Yeah. 
And that's been a busy place over there where buddy Matt Bauman is in the penalty box tonight. Worth noting this evening is Chris Regulieri is called to the bench for a quick drink and a conversation that Zach Richards is not the backup goaltender for Orangeville tonight. They're going with the AP Andrew Wilson wearing number 30. Trey Deer and Jamison Bucktooth. Pass the ball a couple of times and looks like we're back to action. Four on four for the next minute before a major power play will be on the side of Orangeville. Riley DeLille bringing it down. Riley DeLille going for a run. And the shot off the arm of Riglieri. Picked up in the corner by Van Schepen. DeLille gets it back, turns and fires. Oh boy, it sat on the line. And a Riglieri there to pick it up. Gotta be good to be lucky and lucky to be good, I guess. Five for roughing, five for slashing, and a game misconduct to Robertson, which would be a second game misconduct as Donnelly down floor couldn't quite catch up to that loose ball. Robertson got five for roughing as well. As the Orangeville player that met him on the floor. This is a power play now for Orangeville of the major variety. Three and a half minutes to go in that and they can score twice with six and a half to play here in the period. And up top is Bucktooth. Fakes the pass. Down in the corner for Deer. Now Searle and Bucktooth. Coulson. Bucktooth back for Coulson. Shot bounces through the legs of O'Toole. And it's 9 1. Look at the shot there from Coulson. Who scores his second of the game on the power play. And they're still on the power play for three minutes where they can score one more time. Liam Keane keeping it right now and it looks like we're gonna go back to four on four as Chop has been picked up by the trail official and O'Toole's gone to the bench. Shot from Horsley. Grabbed by Riglieri and we'll get the call. It'll be Liam Perro heading to the bench. There's more people on the far side of the floor than there are underneath of us right now, it seems. As has been the case most of the evening in a chippy affair between these two teams. Again, quite the gap between them in the standings, but no love lost in the Historical rivalry between these two. Long range shot off the arm of Riglieri. Rebound up for grabs in the corner now where Brampton picks it up. Looked like Eric Ward, but nowhere to go. And deep in the Excelsior's count, I thought. 
believe that is the case as the scrum now works its way closer and closer to the crease. Kyle Kennery was make sure there to make sure everything was kosher. And now the ball moving its way down the line. Acton will make sure that there's no room to run for Orangeville. Brampton gets the reset as Eric Acton wants to set up now. Chanel coming off the bench will rip it into a Riglieri who covers up. Aiden Long to the far side for Millsap. Under five to go here in the second. Four on four for 50 seconds. Trey Deer. A little back check there from Van Sheppen. May have caused that shot to go wide. Chanel works around his screen. Now the roll from Harkins got hit just as that pass was arriving and Jamie Hunt knocked it free. Aiden Long, bring it back down again. 9-1 for Orangeville. As they led big after the first. Here's Bucktooth, the number one overall draft pick in this year's Junior A draft. Ball rolled away from O'Toole after the shot and a bit of a shove there. In front of the benches. Meanwhile, the shot in on a Rigliari. Trey Deers all alone in on O'Toole the other way and goes over top and gets called for the crease again. Quick look. And that's one of those OJLL no goal calls. As the feet entered the cylinder while the ball was still there. May have been okay in the National Lacrosse League, but not here. Acton into the corner. Major penalty about to expire. Orangeville got one on it. They've got four power play goals off seven opportunities now tonight. Acton. Cutting through to the corner. Gets it back for Merritt. Nicely done by Kyle Kennery to get out of the way as ball bounced off a couple corners. This is going to find the screening for sure out of the stick of Origlieri. Allowing Liam Steele to bring it up over center. We near the two minute warning with both teams having both timeouts still in their back pocket. None taken in that first period. Chanel lacrosse here for Horseman. Bowie Horseman looking for Donnelly, looks off as the pass wasn't there. It rolls back for Ward in the shot. I believe there may have been room in behind a Wrigley but it was just wide as Bucktooth on his wrong side will pass back for Long. Long in his wrong side takes the shot anyways and the rebound goes to Phoenix Pullen. Down the far side for Andrew Horsley through a screen. And the shot in on a Wrigley makes the save and now pushing the floor back the other way is Orangeville. It's Colton Marquis who has scored in this game. Off the bench, Jeremy Searle for Trey Deer. Far side Colt Teeple shot into the legs of O'Toole who makes a save. DeLille out to the corner for Keene. Eric Acton nearing the last minute here of the second period. Cody Merritt crashing in. Merritt lost control of the ball, rolls into the corner. Big scrum there. Orangeville player was there first, but lost his footing and will just muck it long enough for the shot clock to sound. Cody Coulson down the far side. Into the stick here of Millsap. Long range shot, hits off a foot. Bounces all the way back towards center. 
Trey Deer will try again, and this time bounces it. <laughs> that was interesting. Off the shot clock, and it shook an extra ball free to bounce down. Van Sheppen to clear center. It was close, and as he does, timeout is called by the Excelsiors. Gives us a chance to remind you to subscribe to the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League YouTube channel where you won't miss us. Any of our game action as we take you all the way to the Minto Cup here in Brampton at the CAA Center. At the end of August, again after the playoffs are over, the Ontario Finals, a best two out of three series as those two teams will represent Ontario in the Minto Cup. There will be a break for the U-22 World Championships in Ireland. Congratulations to all the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League players selected. As O'Toole makes his way back to the net, penalty boxes are empty. Haven't been able to say it that many, that much tonight. Shot clock, 20 seconds as Brampton restarts here. Horseman. Sticks are out on the bench, off to our right. Orangeville cheering on their defense as Bowie Horseman brings it to the corner for Acton, the cutter. Back door was Eric Ward. Rebound bounces, however, right for Nate Ruff. Here goes Ruff the shot, and O'Toole will make the save and cover up the rebound, and O'Toole will bomb it down the floor and just play catch with the Riglieri to end a penalty-filled second period here in Brampton. Always a Holland when we come to Memorial Arena, and it got pretty heated down on the turf in that second period as well. 9-1 is your score for Orangeville after two periods of play. A reminder that Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week broadcasts are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, visit new.milk.org. As we thank them for their partnership. And we will take a 10 minute timeout and be back for the third period after this short break.
Welcome back to Brampton Memorial Arena. That is the opening face-off for the third period. I'm Matthew Carrick in alongside our JVI Sports Network crew. And in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League, this is your game of the week. Powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. North, or, excuse me, Orangeville Northman up 9-1 after two periods. Big story, Liam Matthews has not returned to the bench, was helped off by two teammates heading to the room. As now double digits on the board. Jeremy Searle will put one in for the Northmen early on here in this third period. Just an individual effort too from Searle. Watch him chase the rebound down and cut back move and a shot and a goal. Aiden Long chasing this one down along with Riley DeLille. And it is Long who gets it. Marquis and Teeple sounds like picking up assists as now Trey Deer can't find that loose ball. Andrew Orsley was headed to the bench as that pass. Nearly hit him in the back. Here's Donnelly. To the outside, Celsius still finishing up a change. Halfway through their shot clock. It's Acton from the far side. Cross for Ward, and now Adrian Chanel. Ward out of the corner, Chanel brings it down. Under five on the shot clock as they do get it through to Origlieri. Rebound into the far corner. Bowie Horseman facing a double team now. And give the reset and no count, so Horseman must have picked it up despite Liam Perro and Jeremy Searle both over there. All of this on Brampton's shot clock. Horseman drags it free, finally it pops loose. And the first one there was Liam Stadnick who postured up over top and then was taken down and do we have a penalty coming here to Donnelly? Looked <laughs> like like Stadnick celebrated as he went off to the bench. Thought he was just getting the possession call, but Donnelly heads off for the eighth power play of the game. Here for Orangeville. Two minutes gone in the first. Teeple working it around. Bucktooth. Colton Marquis taking top spot this time. To Deer in the corner, wanted the quick stick as it worked its way back to Coulson. They go to Coulson again, who sneaks it through the legs of O'Toole. Coulson's got the power play. Or the hat trick, excuse me. Two goals on the power play. And the fifth power play goal of the game for the Northmen on eight opportunities. Brampton 0 for 5 in what is an 11 1 game right now. Coulson. Outside for Deer. Long range shot, that hits the end. Dasher and takes a huge bounce straight back to center. And will be an over and back against Orangeville. Chanel. For Merritt. Two on one here for Orangeville. Pass into the body of Donnie Scott, however. They announced Donnie Scott with the goal. It was definitely Cody Coulson picking up his hat trick and fourth point. Bucktooth and Deer on the assist. Fourth point for both of them in this game as Bucktooth also has a hat trick. 
Here is Jamison Bucktooth. Lead up to 10 now for the Hornheads and working through was Searle. It just tipped off his stick and O'Toole had to be on his game there. There's a big collision just over center. Liam McGrath got a piece of Ty Cardi. Coulson. Well, rip long range off the left arm there of a tool. Trey Deer picks up the rebound though, and now uh, Deer. Getting it back. Off the bench, a change in behind for Marquis. Another penalty coming. And Noah Millsap got into his defender and took him down. That's Andrew Horsley. So I think Horsley getting an initial penalty here. Five on five, Brampton ball. Trying to see the initial penalty to be on the left side of your screen. Oh, there it is, Horsley up high on Millsap who keeps the play going and keep your eye on the left side of the screen as there's why we're even up. The five on five count with guys in the box would be an interesting one tonight too. Harkins. Cody Merritt lost it. We'll play back for Adrian Chanel. Under 10 on Brampton, shot clock. Liam Keane got tripped up and is down. Slow getting up, holding the midsection as Keane heads off. Acton. Donnelly there to set the pick in front. And Donnelly ate a cross check and he's gonna say something to Cohen Jennings after. Donnelly, stick rides high. Donnelly's gonna head off as Arigliari's getting the sprints in tonight. Headed to the bench again. Up top, Pullen involved here. This should be a stoppage as there's two penalties. And a long range shot hits the mask of O'Toole and Van Scheppen. We're gonna get a scrap here, Trey Deer and Mark Van Scheppen. And Deer comes out swinging rights. That one connected. And Van Scheppen takes Deer to the outside, a couple extra for good measure. And ladies and gentlemen, Brampton and Orangeville is in full effect right now. I think Mark Van Scheppen leaking a little bit. They're calling the trainer to go down to the room. And this could be why. Oh, that was a big one right there. And that's been coming for quite some time and we may not be done just yet. Five twenty-two gone here in the third. Eleven one is your score. Mm. Also tonight, Mimico in Burlington. Still waiting for a score update from that game. Although our online scoring says it's scheduled to start at 10 p.m. Which is not correct. It 
eight minutes remaining, and the Burlington Chiefs are up 11-6 in the game between them and Mimico. Mimico, the only team at 13 wins right now in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League standings. Northman could become the fifth team to hit the 10 win mark. I believe if Burlington wins tonight, hangs on to win. That would eliminate Brampton, so would a loss here in this game. High stick, cross check, rough and rough was the signal just given by Mark Sands. All of that started with two penalties. Arms high for two penalties. So Donnelly and Pullen headed off and two minutes each on the board. So back in power play territory or penalty shot territory here for Brampton. Long shot there from Bucktooth. Resounds off the end boards. Here's Searle. Rebound picked up. Marquis. Round is back for Coulson. Bucktooth. Shot stuffed there by DeLille. Bucktooth picked it up and tried to blindly lift it in on net. Missed that mark as straight off the bench. Liam McGrath went at Dante Bowen. Bowen across center, drops the shoulder and a back over is hit, popped it out and Jamison Bucktooth runs straight towards the net. I'm kind of surprised that that was allowed as Bucktooth says hi to one of the Brampton players who was ejected earlier in this game. How about four for Bucktooth? As it starts on the turnover, and then all alone and a little bit extra, too. That looks like it's a bit more fun than initially looked. No fun for Brampton here tonight. As Orangeville up 12 to 1. Bucktooth's fourth of the game has scored three on the power play and one with the extra attacker. Sixth power play goal of the game. A couple slashes there from Elijah Edwards and the second one is called. She'll send us back to four on four. Here's look down low, one and two. That was the louder of the two and when the arm went high. So Elijah Edwards heads off, four on four. Again, no Liam Matthews. Who went down at the hands of Trent Robertson in that second period, was helped off after the second period. Don't see the trainer on the bench either, so perhaps still getting some attention down in the locker room. Was helped to the dressing room by two teammates after that second period. Brampton's penalty has expired, so this is a Excelsior power play, their sixth of the game. Yet to capitalize, though, as a long shot's going to come here from Cole Teeple, skipped it off the turf. Cole Marquis knocked down, and there was a few extra shoves after that, but everyone goes their separate ways. 50 seconds of power play time to work here for Brampton. It's Ward and Horseman. No look pass into the corner, and Acton. Lost control of it on his own, it looked like. 
That's posturing up. Donnie Scott. Off to the right, Andrew Wilson looks like maybe getting the gear on. This is way too early to be walking out. So I think we're going to get Andrew Wilson some time. As perhaps another scrap here with Ward. And I can't see who he's got. I believe it's Donnie Scott. Who's still got the gloves on and is swinging. Tries the takedown, but the boards are in the way. Will the officials step in here? And indeed, Origlieri is coming to the bench to get Andrew Wilson the final 11.54 of runtime here. So Eric Ward joins Mark Van Sheppen, Neil Adamson, and Trent Robertson as ejected players. Donnie Scott off. For Orangeville. And Orangeville will get possession with Noah Millsap. Now Searle. Far side, Bucktooth. Looks off cool soon. He cuts to the net. Down the far side, no room for Searle to run. Searle and Bowen have been nose to nose all night as they meet again. Bucktooth falls, pulling on top of him. Ball popped free and. Bucktooth got the shot away from the corner and the rebound bounced right back to him again and pulling hard into Bucktooth. And I think Orangeville called timeout as Bucktooth picked up that ball. And Andrew Horsley has been shown the gate now. A lot going on here. As we'll start our look with the rebound from Deer. Excuse me, this is Bucktooth who draws the double team and as Poland comes in, this is where the timeout was called by Rusty Kruger. Keep your eye on seven. Is Andrew Horsley on the left side of your screen? And yeah, that's... <laughs> See you later. Straight 10 for Horsley is what's being announced. Here's Bucktooth. Penalty has expired. We're back to five on five. Let's try and keep it that way, boys. Bucktooth across for Marquis. Just one goal tonight for Colton Marquis, who's been on a hot streak as this shot comes from long range from Coulson, who has three in this game tonight. Brampton taking over at center. It's Horseman. Pass back for Merritt and puts a bounce shot in on Andrew Wilson. First touch of the game. Merritt staring down Cohen Jennings at center. Noah Millsap here for Searle. Searle now Coulson. Cole Teeple 
Just two assists for Teeple as well. Brampton half-heartedly arguing for a delay of game call there as the shot clock expires on Orangeville. Reminder to subscribe to this channel where you'll catch our final two broadcasts of the regular season. Next weekend, on Friday evening, the 2019 Minto Cup banner will be raised in Orangeville as they face the Mimico Mountaineers in what could be a huge game for both of those teams in terms of playoff seeding. I think it's pretty safe to say that Orangeville Northman will be there with a win tonight. Up 11 with 10 to go. As Donnelly heads back to the box. For the 10th power play of the game as the officials are starting to hear it from the fans here in Memorial Arena. Donnelly for cross-checking, the latest. As here's Teeple. Long range shot off the arm of O'Toole. Coulson back up top for Marquis. Takes it from Teeple. Looks off Bucktooth and goes back to the righties. Marquis for Bucktooth. Got himself open and that shot rang off the post. Bowen and Searle meet again over on the far boards and it was Searle that poked the ball free. Give Orangeville possession. Still in the stick of Marquis right now. Bucktooth wants that shot again. Won't take it. Bucktooth down to the crease for Searle. It didn't roll far enough for him to pick up. He can reach in and pull it back out, but I think Searle was waiting for it to roll. Ethan Harkins. First Chanel, now Bowie Horseman. 35 seconds of power play time left. Here for Orangeville. Eight and a half to go in regulation. Working out of the corner. Keen on the run, a bounce shot there. Sails up into the screening from Adrian Chanel. Our final broadcast of the year will be next Saturday. That's July the 9th. Right here in this building. Looks like it'll be the Excelsiors trying to play the role of spoiler in that one as we'll see. Could be a big one for the Six Nations Arrows who are still very much alive in the playoff picture. Ty Cardi picking up a rebound off the O'Toole save from the shot. Pull in, will bring it up and across center as we go back five on five. Eric Acton on the run. Into the corner, back up top. A couple of whacks there on Donnelly, fresh out of the penalty box. And now Acton looking for someone to pass to. Goes behind the back to a cutting, Harkins. As those two couldn't connect. Now Chanel just desperately trying to beat the shot clock. Put it in the feet of Wilson. Aiden Long. Got it out and across center. Marquis will start the counterattack. Bowen hard on Searle looking for this ball and got in the back, excuse me, of Long. Resetting the shot clock for Orangeville. You are up 12-1. Here in the back half of the third period. Pulling and Long tied up as this was coming the entire set and O'Toole running away for space and Phoenix pulling and Long tackle each other down.
Another one that's been coming most of the game. Not too sure about Aiden Long, but Phoenix pulling for sure. Poland's been asked to leave. I think whoever was making noise down in the corner, they're gone as well. We'll see who Kyle Kennery caught at the end of that. Try and pick up Pullen here, right up top of the restraining line, I believe. Yeah, it was where that starts between Pullen and Long, and they go at each other all the way down into the fan to the crease and quickly become the main event. Sounds like two tens is the call from the officials. I believe that five minutes for fighting carries the automatic game misconduct and I'm not sure if it's anything else. Both teams kind of mutually agreed. It sounded like that the clock would run down here. So that's what we're gonna do for the rest of the game. Looked like the signal from Kyle Kennery a few minutes ago. So six minutes to go and you can set your timer. Six minutes away from a playoff berth are the Orangeville Northmen. That's not how their season started. This will be five straight for the Northmen. And it comes just as Chris Origlieri starts to get hot after coming off his first National Lacrosse League season. Keen into the corner. Horseman trying to put one more on the board. Chanel fakes the shot, then returns and can't get it through Elijah Edwards. The only goal coming from Liam Keen. In that second period, long night in a long season for the Excelsiors, who are now five minutes away from being mathematically eliminated from playoff contention. They'll join just the Kitchener Waterloo Lacrosse Club. As a long shot is made there from Edwards. As the first two teams eliminated, leaving The other nine to fight over eight spots. And those spots are starting to dwindle as well as Orangeville will pick one up here tonight. Shot off the end boards will go for the over and back against Orangeville again. Keeping the clock running here tonight. Try and get out with no further damage. To their credit, yes, there's been a lot of penalties, but the officials at least trying to make sure that no supplementary discipline follows any of these players. We did have the double majors to Trent Robertson. <coughs> five for roughing, game misconduct, five for, I believe it was slashing. Chanel nearly snuck that one through Andrew Wilson. Harkins over the top. Arms stay down there as he was briefly tripped up. Here comes Acton, he's shot off the end. Glass bounces right back in between Chanel and Harkins and interference called against the Northman will give a fresh 30 here. Keen, hit well cutting through. Bowen turns and fires and Wilson We'll send that one away and Bowen can't come down with it cleanly. Keen. 
Bowen will head through the middle. Another shot from Acton and another save from Wilson. Everything that's gone on tonight, we could have another developing story here. Big takedown as Bowen just drove right through. Owen ran. Horseman. <laughs> Orangeville Norseman basically throwing Cody Coulson on the floor there and nearly got beneficiary of a loose ball, but Orangeville will pick it up as we near the two minute warning. Here's Searle. For Teeple. Coulson. Up top for Searle, back for Teeple again. Pardon me, that's Marquis. 24, not in the 14, is a shot from Coulson. Didn't miss the top of the net by much. Rolls off the end boards, however, and back down into Orangeville territory. Horseman and Liam Stadnick bumping each other. Donnelly will take Stadnick out of the way as the shot comes from Horseman. Drops right into the stick of Chanel. Donnelly tied up by Stadnick in front of the net and Parkins set eyes for the corner. And at the last second, Andrew Wilson throws the shoulder at it. Colton Marquis hangs on to the ball on the hidden ball play. Returns it back for Bucktooth. And Searle up to the restraining line. Jeremy Searle, no time to turn and shoot. As Donnelly and Searle stand together. And Searle and Bowen, surprise, surprise, find each other. Down on the floor, perhaps for the last time tonight, as we're down closing in on 30 seconds. Harkins, Chanel. Harkins goes behind the net. Excuse me, this is Harkins up top. It was Merritt behind the net as they now go to Acton, who shot, gets through Wilson, and about 18 seconds away from what would have been shutout time for. Andrew Wilson, unfortunate, coming on for effectively garbage time here, 12 minutes. As that's how the game will end, your final 12-2, all Orangeville here tonight. As Eric Acton gets one back, but a huge victory on the road tonight for the Orangeville Northmen who do officially clinch. A playoff berth here tonight with their 10th win of the season. And the next time we see them, they'll be unveiling the 2019 Minto Cup banner. Hoping to win back-to-back -back this year. And they've taken the first step here tonight. How about this? Chris Origlieri is going to let Andrew Wilson lead the handshake line. And why not after coming in in relief? On behalf of our director, Rachel Wolf and our producer, Gary Morrison, the JVI Sports Network, and the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League, I'm Matthew Carrick, saying good night, and we hope to talk to you again from Orangeville next Friday.